Please welcome Mayor Linda Page. If I'd known there was going to be so many people here today, I would have uh, worn lipstick, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, I am Mayor Linda Page, and I'd like to, before I get started, introduce a few other people that are here today. I see Elton Carrier, fellow council member. Elton, if you would stand up and everybody say hello to Elton. Uh, one of my newer council members in the back, Mark Smith. <laughs> also have Ashley Richardson here from the town of Mount Pleasant. Uh, she's a face you'll all need to know. So. I'm going to kind of keep this short and sweet, and I tweaked a muscle in my back because I, I do move furniture for a living, so if I kind of go like that, it's not because of anything except that I tweaked my back. Anyway, my name is uh, Linda Page. I am your new mayor. And um, I am an auctioneer by trade. That's the main focus of my business. I have an antique shop that's been in existence since 1959. We're a third generation. Um, I did have a small part of Oka Grill, and I'm, I'm getting out of that business. It's my brother and my nieces and my talented nephew, and, and they do a great job there. Um, I was a council member for four years before I decided to run for mayor, overwhelmingly supported by the voters of the town of Mount Pleasant, um, pleased to win every precinct which um, kind of led me to believe that you guys wanted me to be the mayor. So there you go. I appreciate that. Um, I thought about the speech today. Typically, the January speech is a state of the town. But, you know, the state of the town is changing every day, and this really isn't a state of the town. I just want to kind of introduce myself, talk a little bit about what Mount Pleasant does for businesses, kind of really want to make it related to you. Um, you mentioned some of the jobs that I have, and, and people think, well, what does a mayor do? So that was kind of what I wanted to answer first. You know, I am a weak mayor, strong council form of government. I have an equal voice with Mr. Carrier, Mr. Smith, and the other council members that I serve with. Um, I do get a few perks. I get to make appointments to committees, and um, I get to vote last, you know, which is always interesting in the game. Um, I had to write it down. Uh, I was elected in November. I also had an accident in my family. If you don't know, it's not part of the story. My son broke his back. He's become a paraplegic. It's certainly an interesting part of this story because it has made things interesting, <laughs> to say the least. That happened September 26th. We went into the election, and I wrote it down in November because I really couldn't believe it, but I had 72 meetings in November. That being said, I'm a part-time mayor. <laughs> yeah, you got that. And a full-time business owner. I also had four auctions that month, and I did manage to get two appraisals out. Uh, so I was pretty, pretty proud of myself in November. I think I slept through December. Don't remember much of it, but I'm sure something happened then too. But your mayor does a lot of stuff that people don't talk about and think about. Um, I serve on the Aviation Authority. I'm leaving here, and I'm going over to a board meeting, and we're going to try to see if we're going to give our good steam and contract or not. That'll be interesting. I also serve on the Patriots Point Board, and they have a lot going on over there with the Medal of Honor Museum coming on and, you know, the foundation raising money, and we're getting ready to open up new properties for lease over there, so there's going to be development down there, and people are going to start screaming because trees are going to get crunched and new things are going to come out of the ground. I also serve on the COG, Council of Governments, CHATS, the Charleston Regional Development Authority Board, and Waterworks. That being said, you know, I think what happens with the mayor is you find out a lot of stuff that's going on, and it's awesome, because I'm having the opportunity now to assimilate all that information that they're throwing at me and, and make it benefit you guys, not just the business owners, but also the citizens. And the business owner part is very interesting. I had an orientation with the Regional Development Authority uh, this week to really talk about true economic impact and drivers for our community and what we can do to make Mount Pleasant better. With that, I'm going to give you a little bit of facts and some business data um, about what we got going on, and Ashley helped me with this this morning. We have about 5,000 brick and mortar businesses in the town. Mostly, those are healthcare, professional, retail, hospitality. And you know the hospitality business, I mean, everybody wants to be here, you know, we have great restaurants. Charleston, of course, we piggybacked on their Condé Nast, best in the world destination. I think Mount Pleasant is best in the world. I do get out with Joe Riley any day, but, you know, he won the title. We didn't, you know, maybe we need to work harder for that. Um, we, our trends are health care. You know, we've got a lot of health care being built here. I uh, heard MUSC is represented here today with a beautiful new building on Hungry Neck. It is very nice. 
and, and we're active, our ex is here in the back, um, and, and that's an interesting program because they are strength training seniors. Um, I have a friend who goes and it's kind of awesome. You know, we want active people throughout their lives. We want them to age in place. We want them to be healthy. And so healthcare is a big part of it. We have an aging population. We defined ourselves as almost being problematic because so many of us are going to be old. It's really going to affect your services. It's going to affect trash pickup, sanitation, everything. So we have to talk about it and consider it. That's just a little bit of facts about business data. I thought I'd talk a little bit about our challenges. You know, everybody says, well, you have a $25 million fund balance. You know, we're operating um, well within our budget, and we do a great job. And when I say great job, if you don't put your trash can out, and you call the next day, they'll come back and get it. I mean, that's white glove service. I mean, white glove. But there are challenges. There are challenges that come with white glove service, and that's cost and, and how long you can sustain things. And we're actually having a retreat on Tuesday. It's a public retreat. You're welcome to come. Um, we get together, and it's a it's a big deal because you know we spend a whole day. My council members give up a whole day, and we hash out our capital improvement plan, the projects, we talk about strategies and things that we can do in the coming years to make your town better. So our challenges. Capital improvement, period, period, period. I met with Mac Burnett today and they need $60 million in the next 25 years to, to, to stay abreast. Capital improvement, that's not operational. That's what they need to stay running. What does the town need? Infrastructure, infrastructure, and infrastructure. We did this survey about all the assets that we own, and we had never done that. So, you know, we have this many miles of roads and this many miles of ditches and underground ditches and all the things that aren't sexy. And this is kind of crazy because when you run for public office, if you're passionate like I am and these guys are in the room with me today, what you want to do is all the fun stuff. I mean, I want to build parks and I want to give you kayak launches and, you know, I want new ball fields and, you know, all great recreational facilities. But... What we have to focus on is keeping the ditches clean. Because if we don't keep the ditches clean, then the water doesn't flow, and the roads get flooded, and businesses aren't working, and you can't deal with your everyday life, and your quality of life goes down. So infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. How does that affect business? Well, it's probably the, the two things we can offer you are public service, which we have first class, because we pick up your trash, and we protect you. Our police department and fire department protect you. We had a fire a couple weeks ago in Ion. We had two police officers who were there first. They went into a building that had a propane tank spewing 50-foot flames. They went upstairs and woke the people up and got them out. The fire department responded. It got under control very quickly. The firemen went back in because one of the people sleeping upstairs was a young bride who was leaving on her honeymoon the next day with her husband. Her wedding dress was upstairs. They went back up and got her wedding dress. But you said we protect you and we serve you very well. But the challenges of infrastructure affect business in ways you're just not even aware of. If we didn't have all those first class services and our roads weren't paved well and our ditches weren't kept clean, then you guys wouldn't enjoy the business that you have. So, unfortunately, most of the focus in public service is not building new kind of launches and recreational facilities, it's keeping ditches clean. Recruiting business is a big part of what the town of Mount Pleasant intends to do. I think every mayor, you know, you say, okay, mayor, now what? You know, it's like the next day, you know. It's like you, you want your prom queen and now what are you going to do? Everyone wants to know what's your plan, what's your vision, what's your goal. Well, my goal is to really, truly focus on business. Because business is what makes us who we are. You guys, individual mom and pop business owners. Um, there's some big business owners too. But uh, recruiting business is one of the things that I like to do. And recruiting business means a lot of things. We are looking to hire a full-time economic development person who truly just looks at how to buy properties and identify properties and get developers to partner with us and put business here. That being said, if you're an engineer or an architect or someone who wants to make 
you know, over a minimum wage retail job, you're going to have opportunities within your own community to go get those jobs. You can work here, you can live here, you can play here, you can worship here. Everything is in our community. We don't continue to build just residential developments, not that I have anything against residential real estate developments, but really true business. Um, and then the other thing is, is maintaining relationships with you guys. And I'm really not sure how that looks. You guys have to tell me. Um, you know, the relationship between the existing businesses and the town government, and I tried to explain this to someone else the other day, I ran for election not because of a problem I had, because things were good with me. The town had been good to my business. But I was concerned about what things were happening on Cone Boulevard and the future of business and other issues that were coming up. So I stepped up to serve. That being said, if you feel like government in town Mount Pleasant impedes you, I want to talk to you. If you feel like it limits or hinders your ability, I want to talk to you because it's you guys, Mount Pleasant <coughs> business leaders, who are going to are going to help me, and you're going to you know have your ear. So you're going to say, Linda, you know, I can't get permits, I can't get digital billboards. <laughs> We've been working really hard on that issue, um, and maybe we don't want digital billboards, you know. So there you go. Um, but what we can't know unless you tell us and we have conversation, and we have dialogue. My council members feel the same way. Elton's a retired banker. Uh, Mark's in the uh, undertaking business, which we all need him, you know, at some point in our lives. And um, I think you, you'll know we're business friendly as a group, and we want to help. So I think y'all are going to do that. What else do I want? I want to grow professional and technical sectors. And when I say that, you know, we've already been identified as a tech hub here, the Charleston area, and those are the clean industries, the clean businesses, the high paying jobs, you know, those are the things. We need office buildings. We have the quality of life. We have to work on getting the schools here, and we have to make sure that the schools are first uh, top notch. Because if you have talent coming in from somewhere else that's used to a different school structure or a better school structure, we, we, we can't force them to go to Port Gowd or other private schools because they think that South Carolina public education isn't what they're looking for. So we have to have the talent. We have to do that. So we have to work with them. I told you we were hiring a full-time ED. If you don't know about our Harbor Accelerator, it's an exciting project. It's a nonprofit. It's in town hall. They're not going to be there long because we're going to squeeze them out with the new construction of our, our beautiful new $22 million town hall, hopefully soon. Um, but the Harbor Accelerator is an opportunity for businesses to come in. We had eight, is it Ashley? We had eight come in from all over the country. Um, we take them under our wing, and the Harbor Accelerator takes them under their wing, and we grow them, and we don't grow them long, and we push them out on their own. And if they make it, great, and if they stay in Mount Pleasant, even better. We don't, have, we don't force them to stay here, but we help them get started. We uh, also have to understand, we're going to the retreat to talk about raising taxes. I told the town administrator, I said, man, give me a break. Three months, the mayor. Haven't raised taxes in 20 years. How can you put this on my agenda? This is really not fair. You're picking on me. But he's not picking on me. And maybe we don't need to raise taxes, but maybe we do need to raise taxes. But businesses need to understand why we're making decisions and it all goes back to infrastructure and it all goes back to really truly building a great town you got to have the money to make sure that the quality of the infrastructure is in place that includes fiber optics not just roads not just ditches anyway what else have i got road access talent challenges i'm going to go here i'll answer a few questions what does this guys mean to you? One of the research, uh, one of the things we're going to discuss at our retreat next week is concierge government. It's kind of a cool concept. Stay tuned for more information on it. I think you're going to find, you know, we want, you know, if you've ever looked at the map, you know, you guys, citizens drive our, y'all are top of me. So you got citizens up here, then the mayor, then the town council, then the administration, the staff. Y'all are already driving it. So step up and let us know where you want to go. So. We're going to discuss a lot about that. 
If you're a business owner and you don't know it, you can be on our website. We have a business directory. The town will help you. Just go down, talk to Ashley. She'll be glad to get you started. You have staff access the days that we're there. You got a problem or an issue, um, legislative, uh, governmental, or not. I mean, I've been working with Steve at Water Dog because his road is flooding. That's a DOT problem, and I keep reminding him of that. <laughs> but he keeps coming back, and we're still helping him with it. I mean, you guys have had some problems with, with signs, you know, and, and we're, we're dealing with that. It's outdoor advertising, you know. We've had problems with other business owners who had non-conforming signs that needed repair, and they didn't want to replace it. So we changed ordinances for them. We're taking away A-frames, guys. If you have one, and you're not supposed to have one, within about 90 days, you know, we're going to let you have some time to get compliant, but it's rampant. It's kind of getting to be clutter. We know it's hurting businesses. We don't want to hurt businesses. We just want to, we just want to enforce the side ordinance we have. If you got an A-frame, it's coming. Anyway, the uh, two times a month, SCORE counseling is available. You can call, find out. If you don't know about SCORE, it's a great group of retired executives. They help. They're great. And we have a lot of networking opportunities within the town. So if you want to come to a meet and greet or a social or a breakfast, please come. And networking is what it's all about. You guys know why this organization is so successful. The um, other service that we provide, obviously, you know, public safety schools. And I want you to know you do have my ear. Um, I, I, made a, I made a commitment early on when I got elected, the mayor's office is open. It needs some help decorating. I need a little help decorating. So if you guys got any ideas, it's kind of really a man's office. It's not really that great right now. I did get a bird feeder for Christmas that's going outside the window. Um, but I'm trying to determine a way, with your help, that we can not only have your ear, but reward you for your successes. And we have so many talented people in the town of Pleasant. Children, um, businesses, they get accolades all the time. I got a great letter from the cookie lady. Is the cookie lady here? Hey, there she is. I got a great letter from her telling me about her business and telling me about what she did and she won $10,000, didn't you? 3000 but yeah. There you go. Well, and, and the exciting thing about it is, is you know, we don't, have a, we don't have an opportunity to talk about your businesses unless we know about your businesses. We don't have an opportunity to talk about your successes unless we know them. I met a young woman the other day who got a full scholarship to Princeton. She needs a proclamation. I mean, don't you think? You know, and you guys do too. So that's what I have for you about what we're doing as a town. You know, me as your mayor, my goal and direction for the next four years are to truly understand the needs of our infrastructure, make sure that we have enough capital to do those things. We've been very proactive with our health care. We now have a town doctor. We are saving money on health care. Um, we have hired a few new people, most positions are still frozen, recovering from the Great Recession, and we're looking at different forms of government that involve citizens. To me, it's all about being engaged. I had a thousand people sign a petition in the old village because they don't like Earl's Court. I don't particularly like Earl's Court. And my brother asked me, he says, what in the world have you opened? What floodgate have you opened to bring these thousand people? We had 60 people crammed into a meeting last Friday. And it was the best thing that could have ever happened to Lynn Page. Because that means a thousand more people are paying attention and 60 people took the time out their Friday morning to come sit down and make sure we're doing the right things. So we're willing to do it. We need your ear. And that's what I got. And I'm going to answer a few questions. And then I'm leaving you because i got to go over to the Aviation Authority. So, anyone have any questions? Ms. Boyd. What's going to come into the Kmart Center? The only thing I've heard is they're not going to do a major redevelopment at this time, and possibly they're going to just redevelop the site and bring in a uh, retailer, a larger retailer. That's all I know for sure. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, Linda, uh, we were talking about this in the board meeting. That I used to live around, say, Washington, D.C., in my country county, had a million people. And one of the things that the government did is uh, we were part of the German Town Alliance. They would actually come to us and say, there are business issues that we want your feedback on. So as you're thinking about us giving communication to you, just to encourage, 
if, whether it's Ashley or you, that intentionally the group is saying, we need to hear from the business community and bring that to our MPBA meeting so that we can actually give feedback back to you. And I think that's great. And I think that somehow, and I'm looking to you guys, I mean, somehow we need to open that dialogue because I can't know the worst case scenario for me is I'm in the Piggly Wiggly and I'm usually in blue jeans and I usually have a ponytail and I never have lipstick. So if I'm in the Piggly Wiggly, you don't recognize me. But the worst case scenario for me is I've been moving furniture all day or we've been out in the rain or it's cold or we're working really hard and you come and you pull me aside and you say, you know, I've been trying to get that permit and I can't get it. You know. Because that doesn't really work very well because I don't have a chance to put it in my phone and I don't have a chance to properly respond. And I have your ear and I still want to have the conversation. But call me or email me. My cell phone number is like, if you can't get Linda Page's cell phone number, you're, you're out of the loop. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? What's happening with Francis Marion? I have met with the um, president of Francis Marion and uh, Daniel Dukes and two of the members of his board, and we are trying to help them come to town on Pleasant. And we are going to limit our commitment of what we're able to do because obviously um, it can't be an unended. We want to incubate them, and we haven't come to, we haven't found anything that's perfect for them yet. But we're trying. Just one, one more question. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. The gas station near Rivertown is in Boza this week or next week. I think Boza means next week. Boza is next week. Mark Smith doesn't want to hear this. Am I killing? Am I hurting yet, Mark? What's going to happen with? Can you want to answer that, Mark? I, I just don't like what I've heard so far. I'm going to keep up the good fight because we absolutely 100% do not want it. But, uh, it's, uh, it's coming. But it's coming. There you go. Okay. See, Mark, Mark said it, not me. Anyway, you guys, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for having me. If I'd known you, but there was that many of you here, I certainly would have worn some list for you. Thanks for having me on. Uh,